All right, welcome to the jungle. Uh, this is week eight. Holy cow, we're almost done. The semester has flown by, um, probably for you like it has for me. Um, so this week we're doing hard surface drawing. Check out the hard surface drawing stuff. And then the photo collage prep. So this is our last assignment, our last actual like big assignment is the photo collage. And the photo collage is an actual, uh, it's a pretty awesome assignment um, because in this case what we're doing is we're taking all the garbage we've already learned, it's not actual garbage, but all the stuff we've already learned uh, from before and we're actually applying it into a single project. You'll see that in week eight oops, and week nine, we have prepping, okay? Uh, and then week 10, we are working on the photo collage. And then week 11, we're working on it. And then week 12, we're turning our stuff in. Um, so this one is gonna span, again, several weeks. Um, what we're gonna do in week eight and nine is prep for it, okay? So all of the stuff that we're gonna be doing is um, prepping these first two weeks, making sure we have all the stuff ready. So part of any big project that you'll ever do is going to be this preparation research uh, planning stage and the better you do at the prepping and planning the better the end result is going to be if you do a crap job here it's just gonna you know crap in crap out is what uh, happens okay so what we want to do is we want to um, do our prepping for this week and then we'll have another video for the prep for next week um, type of stuff all right so let's first go through like what is the actual assignment that's not it that's something else um, do, 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 do. All right, so this is a Photoshop environment. Now, obviously, this is no, this doesn't exist anywhere in the world. This is a picture of a girl here, or a boy. Um, kind of looks like a girl the way they're standing. Um, this is obviously some shapes, some buildings in the background, a moon or planets uh, way out here in the distance, and then a bunch of smoke cloud stuff. Um, so this is something that would commonly happen in Photoshop is you need to basically build uh, an environment, okay? And so that's what we're going to be doing is we're we'll using um, multiple images and putting them together in order for this to look like it's a completed image. Now, it becomes a bit tricky because there's a lot of stuff. Here's the original image. Here's the, um, the edited one. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we need to understand about as we're working. It's not simply a matter of dragging a bunch of images together. We have to go through and actually put things in the right spots. So this is pretty neat too. Uh, so tiny. Maybe if I go to the page, it'll have bigger stuff there. Uh, Pinterest, super awesome. If you've never used Pinterest before, um, it's really cool because it allows you to save all of your stuff. So if you ever find a bookmark, you're like, awesome, I wanna save it, then you can save it right there, okay? Um, so yeah, let's we'll go back to that. So that's what we're gonna be doing is creating um, an environment. Now, you're gonna need to incorporate at least 10 different images together. So write that down. You'll need 10, one, zero different images together at least in order to make your final image work, okay? So what we're not doing is like here is this and then we're just like changing the background, adding a sky and doing this. We want more and more and more stuff in there. And most importantly, this is a Photoshop assignment. Um, this is using all these techniques, using things like adjusting colors, using things like um, uh, cutting things out, um, using things like positioning and rescaling and changing perspectives and you know anything that we need to do to make it look like these items are part of the same scene, that's what we want. Now you can also, um, when you're looking for things inside of, of Google, I just typed in Photoshop environment matte painting Matte painting is typically what you would um, see for this. Um, you could also go to YouTube and search for um, CG breakdown environments. And you'll pull up a bunch of videos where they show, here is, oops, I went too quick. Here is the finished environment. <clears throat> here is the plate. So this is like what they started with. And then watch all the stuff they added. This is, that was CG geometry that they added. But then look at all the stuff here and here and all of the different things that are using to add into the scene to create a final picture, to create a final image of this thing. Now this is, even though we're seeing it move, this is essentially a still image, right? And they just kind of broke it apart. So here's another one, oops. There's the final image. 
or the start image, and then here's the additional stuff they added to it. Okay, so where does this start? Where do we start with our research? Well, we need to grab images, okay? So you need to obviously get an idea of something you want to create. Um, I think it's always best to have a plan in mind of what you want to do. So if you, like let's say you watch Game of Thrones, or you read books, or you um, listen to music, or poetry, or whatever, anything. If you find anything out in the real world, and you're like, hey, I would like to create that in Photoshop, it's a starting point. It gets you to the, to the spot where you say, okay, well, at least I'm not starting from a blank piece of paper. I can do some research and I can kind of figure out um, what it is that I want to start to create. Um, so what you want to do is you want to open up your WordPad and you want to basically just list different features of that that show or, t or uh, movie or whatever it is. So um, for me, like there was a book that I read and it was called um, Robo... Apocalypse, okay, Apocalypse, I think that's how it's spelled, um, and it was a really good book, it was basically about the um, robots taking over, kind of like Terminator, but it was more of, you know, what is actually happening when the robots are taking over, and it was a bunch of little stories that eventually tied into each other, okay, so ideally, um, something like this would be like, okay, well, what, what items could I incorporate from the book that I read that would make sense, so obviously there is robots, all over the place. It's war. Um, um, there is uh, building damage. There is um, bodies laying around. There is stuff boarded up. There is debris. You know, and you want to go through and make like an entire list of all the different things that you can come up with um, that will feed into this. Okay. So uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to find three, um, three different topics to talk about. Okay, so one of them would be Robo Apocalypse. Okay, so I would create a word list for that, and then let's say another topic. Okay, and the reason we're doing three of these is because it it takes at least three of these to understand what you're trying to do and to get the process down, so that in future assignments, because this class is not just a one-off. It's not like you take a math class and forget everything. This is something that's going to feed into all your other classes. So let's say another one is uh, Walking Dead. Okay, bigger font so we can see it. <clears throat> and let's say Walking Dead. So again, we have um, zombies. Oops, let's make this a smaller part. Let's see, it's separated. There we go. Okay. So we have zombies. We have um, blood. Um, there are broken down cars everywhere, abandoned buildings, signage for um, uh, keep out. I'm trying to think of the other word. Whatever. Quarantine, that's what it is. Quarantine. And the words don't even have to really make sense as far as like, you know, I need a sign that says quarantine. It's just like the word quarantine will remind me that I need something for that. Okay. These are all just like keywords that feed into this. So again, I'm going to make uh, another word document, word pad document. Oops. There we go. And let's pick another one. So the other one would be, oh, I know. Um, Time Machine. Okay, so this is a book that I just um, sort of kind of read. I listened to it. I love audiobooks. Come on, 14, there we go. All right, so um, things that go with the Time Machine. So we have obviously the Time Machine device. We have the, uh, we have the Eloy, we have the Morlocks. Um, if you need assistance in like remembering specific attributes, go to the internet, look things up. Because I couldn't remember their name. I couldn't remember the uh, Eloy and the Morlocks. I couldn't remember what they were called. Um, and then you get information. Ape-like um, troglodytes who live in the darkness. So that might be like a good 
thing because we don't really see too much of their world you know that might be kind of a neat way to see like what's going on in the underground um so then again i'm, I'm helping myself direct my attention to where i need to direct it um so if i'm going with the morlocks then uh, dead or imprisoned and the Morlocks, and then what, they were heavy on machinery, so they have lots of machinery. They live in the dark. Um, features about them is that they, you know, build traps. Let's say um, there's something else that was kind of key to that too. Okay, so you just go through and you just uh, scroungers. There we go. Scroungers. Uh, you go through and you create a list. Now your end list should have. Um, at least 20 different words on here okay so we have so far we're doing three different movie book ideas okay so you're picking three different ones of these boom boom and boom and then you're gonna put in 20 different words for each and then we're going to be doing 10 pictures at least for the final image comp okay so now we're not going to be doing three movies that that would be incredible overkill for um, the assignment and we just literally don't have enough time to do three different uh, movie and book ideas um, what we're going to do is you're going to narrow it down. Okay. So, um, the first stage of any research project is that we get our research. Okay. So put 20 to pick three movies or books or whatever topics you want to cover. And that could be, you know, other things too. Like people love the apocalypse, um, end of world type things, you know, hunger games and whatever else. And yeah. So pick three different topics to to use make 20 different words for each that describe it and then find at least uh, 20 pictures okay you're gonna use 10 in your final comp uh, but you need to find also 20 images okay so now for this for the three different movies the 20 different words then you go and find 20 images and these 20 images for each should be related to your words, right? So if I am doing Robopocalypse and robots is one of my words, I need to find pictures of robots. Now, in the past uh, of this semester, we've, uh, we're have we a little bit lax in picking things. Uh, we just basically went to Google and we could just grab images and use images from there, okay? But realistically, we, we can't do that. Not if this is a production piece, okay? So, one of the things we have to be concerned about is copyright. So if I take a picture of something and I put it up on my web page, nobody can legally take that image and use it to make money. That's that's like a no-no, okay? Now, as we're in education, we have a little bit more freedom to um, use stuff, but we want to make sure that we're understanding and using the correct methods now so when we get a job, we're not falling back on you know old habits. So if I were to just type in here robots and I go to images, and I say, that's a cool image of a robot. I'm going to grab that. And I download it. I don't have the permission to use this image, most likely. Okay. Um, these images are copywritten by whoever it was that created this stuff, and it belongs to them. So, close that. Uh, if I go to my search tools in Google, I can go to usage rights, and you can see the different usage rights here. So, this is for non commercial, and we're using it and modifying it. So, we want to click this. Now here are the robots that are labeled for reuse with modification. So any one of these um, I could grab for my image, okay? Now we need a certain size because some of these are incredibly small, um, like, yeah, like this one. So this one's only 489 pixels by 720. And if I view it, I can't zoom into it, uh, but if I view it, it's actually probably not, there we go. Um, a really high quality image. You can see how grainy it is and how horrible these edges are. And so if I, again, start with crap, I'm going to get crap out of the image. So I don't want to do that, okay? 
any image you grab should be at least 1200 pixels in one direction. So if I click on the size, I can go to larger than, and I can specify um, larger than 1024, let's say, okay? Because there's, there's not like 1200 here that we could just type in, it's a range, right? So if I go to this one, this one will give me anything, everything above that. So I just wanna make sure that as I go to these, I grab something that is at least 1200 pixels. So you see where this says 960 by 1280, this one is at least 1200 pixels in one direction. So I could use this one. So if I wanted to use this, I would view the image, I would right click, I would save the image, I would go into my work folder, I would go into my photo collage, and here is planning part A. And so I would go into here and I would make a new one. I would call this Robo Apocalypse. And I put that in there and I would say save. And I could close that window and I can go find another one. Now keep in mind too that if I'm doing Robopocalypse, I'm trying to make like scary robots, this one is not the one to use. This is um, <laughs> Osimo and he is not a scary robot. Something like that, that's scary, okay? So if I view this image, again, I want to make sure that it's a nice quality image, that it's not like fuzzy or um, pixelated or anything like that. So I could save the image, throw it into that folder, okay? So this is one way that we can get these kinds of images is by going into Google, making sure we're labeled for reuse with modification, uh, making sure it's larger than this and we're grabbing everything that's over 1200 or anything, but grabbing items that are appropriate for um, over 1200 pixels. Uh, other items inside of our list, right? So we have to find obviously, um, robot war you know maybe we'll find something like this where we oh that's cool there's tank treads so maybe I want to use these tank treads in something now because these are in grayscale I would have to recolor them in Photoshop um, or not use them at all most likely I wouldn't use them because I don't want to limit myself to that okay um, here's some sort of robot horse so you're going to go through and just grab as much images as you can, um, at least 20 different images. Now we want 20, we're only using, uh, we're using at least 10, uh, but it doesn't mean that we won't use more than 10. Uh, we just want to make sure we have plenty of them out there. And part of this is that as we're going through and we're getting things like here's my Robo Apocalypse and here's all the stuff that um, I feel is important to it. Um, If I can't find correct images or I can't find enough images for it, then it's just not going to work, okay? And it's just, why even why even go any, any further if I don't have enough imagery for something like this, okay? So now Google Images, like I said, is one of those resources where we can use. Another one is textures.com, and I've shown this before um, in class. So you can use this as like, um, uh, landscape right there, that's what I was looking for. So I can find different landscapes that I may want to incorporate into mine. So if I'm doing Robopocalypse, um, there's obviously a lot of stuff that would be happening like in the um, city area uh, because you know buildings could be destroyed and whatever else. Um, there's a couple of things in, um, not the desert, but like the greener areas uh, away from everything. And then there's a couple of things in some snowy areas too. Okay, so I can go through here and again, try to grab um, as many images. So like something like this, ooh, that's cool. Um, I would have to log in. There we go. And I would have to again grab an image that's at least uh, 1200. Now for something like this, um, I actually wouldn't probably use uh, textures.com unless I had like the full membership, which I used to have, um, but then it just expired. So I have to get uh, it again. What I would do is try to go find it somewhere else. So other resources are places like DeviantArt. So down here at the bottom, they have resource and stock images on DeviantArt, DeviantArt. Um, and they have a bunch of stuff. So they have models that they've built, application resources, clip art, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Stock images. Uh, I can go through and see here's some nature stuff or places. 
and then each one of these images will have on it uh, off to the right there it is there's a download button and then they'll even have typically they'll have the information about the license for it submitted by eight megs that, 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 that camera data Yeah, I don't see anything specifically on this one. So um, I can download this and possibly use it. It's actually too fuzzy to use. It's like really uh, not as good a quality when it's zoomed up. Okay. And the reason for this is that um, this is going to be one of our major focal points. Um, and so we need this to be big enough to see, big enough to use, um, and then obviously have the right perspective. Now, if you are the photographing type you might already have photos of this stuff and you can use those too because uh, you may not be able to get the right angle so here's something that might be a cool picture it's 5,000 by 3600 that should be a plenty big uh, oh here it is here's the stock rules so do notify and credit you can show your work of my stock outside of district or DeviantArt uh, but don't forget to link back to the page. Uh, commercial use and prints are allowed. Take uh, part in any contests. Okay. Um, so there's the information about it. So we could download this. And then see if it's a good enough image, then we could use it. All right. So again, here's another resource um, that you could use to grab some of your imagery. Hit the back button a couple more times. Um, there's also, like I said, places. So here are different places, buildings, whatever. Um, you can also just go back to your resources and you can just do a search for it. So if you needed um, a standing girl, okay, you may want a standing girl image and you can see all the different images that they have. She's obviously not standing, she has fallen. <laughs> so here's another image. 2,500 by 39, plenty big. Um, here's my stock image ter terms, credit them, link back, and inform me. Okay, so those are like three things. So whenever you download these, it's always good to download it and then save the bookmark too. Okay, that way you have it in case you do end up using this image and you do want to link back to them um, because you're following their rules, um, you'll have that information, okay? And some of these, like this one, some of these are used for posing. So if you're doing character stuff, you can pose them uh, with some of these pose pictures. There's another image. The nice thing on here, you can zoom in and kind of see the quality before you download it. And you can also see a different pose selection for them, uh, which is definitely awesome that you can do that. Okay. So that's another resource <clears throat> that you can use. And then there's Pixabay. And Pixabay, you create a login, and then you can um, download pictures. Um, there are ads on here, and if you upload 10 pictures, then your ads will go away. Uh, but these are pretty decent as well. So if I needed like um, Alaska, here is a bunch of pictures of Alaska. So here's the ads up top, you just ignore that. And then we can go to these ones, and you'll see this is public domain, free for commercial use, no attribution required, and you can download it. So I can download the image, Here's the different sizes, 2400 by 15, download, good to go, okay? So for each one of these topics you've chosen, each one of these three topics, what you're going to be turning in on Sunday is 20 different words for each, so just a little text pad of each one, 20 images of each, and then the final thing I want is just a, um, a brief paragraph of what the story is okay so for like let's say robo apocalypse what is the general story so let's go and put a couple lines in and we'll say this is the story of how robots have taken over and destroyed humans um how humans 
plot back. Plot back. Oops. And all the mayhem involved. Okay. So I don't need, you know, uh, uh, the entire story. I don't need the back of the book. All I want to know is just the gist of the story. It's a story about robots taking over destroyed humans, how humans fought back, and all the mayhem involved in that. Something like the time machine. Um, guy invents time machine, travels forward into time, and finds two species of creatures. One lives above ground, one below. There we go. That's all I really need. Okay. Um, uh, maybe a little bit more the below ground more lock steal his time machine and he needs to get it back all right and then my other one let's see walking dead zombie apocalypse people have scattered Away from big towns after massive casualties and live in forests right so it's giving you an idea of the different things that are um, inside of it it gives me an idea because I've seen The Walking Dead I've read The Time Machine and I've read um, Rob Apocalypse so I know what these are but you may not know what these are and me looking at your word list may not um, help me do that okay um, also, your word list is not limited um, to that amount. Like if you want to write down 50 words, cool, write 50 words. If you want to get 50 images, get 50 images. These are the bare minimum. And um, most people decide to go above that, and we encourage that. Okay? So that is going to be your planning for this one. Um, the planning for the next piece, somewhere I have so many windows open. That's not it. I don't know why that's still open. There we go. The planning for week nine, um, I'm going to take all three of your proposals. I'm going to review all three of your proposals, and then I will give you back the one that you will do. Okay. So um, of the three, I'm going to pick the one you're going to do. So make sure you've picked three that you would be happy doing, and make sure all three are complete um, in all the research. And then I'm going to say you're going to do Walking Dead, or you're going to do robo apocalypse or whatever it is you uh, end up doing um whichever one of your three movies i decide has the most ability to have to be successful okay and then in week nine you'll be working on more planning stuff and then in week 10 you're actually going to start building the pieces okay so week 10 you'll build it you'll turn in where you are at at the end of week 10 on a friday so you can't uh, procrastinate on this one and then over the weekend, I'll look at it. I'll see what needs to be corrected or where you're going with it. And then week 11, you'll work on it some more. Um, <clears throat> the week, end of week 11, they'll turn it in um, again so I can critique it, give you some final adjustments. And then in week 12, um, you'll be finishing it up, final adjustments, turning that in, plus your final assignments. Okay? And then we're all done. All right. So... Um, so that's it. That's what you're going to need to do for the prep. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, it's kind of overwhelming, but the biggest thing is do your research and do what is the assignment, and it'll make it, a much, make it much easier when you get to the actual part of the assignment where you're actually building the Photoshop stuff. Okay? Cool beans.